You have done all the prep. You've prepared a sensory bin, and the moment is here. You are ready to hand this amazing bin to your child. But what do you say? How do you prepare your child to be successful while also making sure you contain the mess inside this bin? Today is part three of our sensory bin series. We have already covered how to put sensory bins together and how to implement them in your home with your little ones. I've linked those episodes in the show notes. So grab your notebook and a hot beverage as we dive into my favorite ways to set your children up for success when first starting out with sensory bins. Hey there, Mama. I'm Lauren Brainerd, and this is Teach Your Littles at Home. I'm so excited you have tuned in as I share fun and hands-on activities you can use right away to help you play and learn with your little ones. So let's dive right into today's episode so you can make more memories than you ever dreamed of. There are some important key things to do as you introduce sensory bins to prevent catastrophic events from happening to your home. If you don't remember anything else I say today, then remember this. Make your first sensory bin as simple as possible. The purpose of your first sensory bin is to teach our children how to use the materials appropriately, not to try to create an academic lesson. That will come later. First, choose the area you want to work in. Depending on your child's age, you might choose the kitchen floor, a toddler table, or even the backyard. The larger the bin, the more room your child is going to have to play. I find that larger bins are best so that the mess stays inside the bin. So if you can picture, you have this large bin of rolled oats. Your child is trying to pour one measuring cup into another measuring cup and then stir it with a whisk. Well, if you give them a little, you know, like 10 by 5 inch bin, yeah, things are going to spill over the side and there are going to be many more messes to clean up. If you give them a larger bin, then it's just so much easier for them to have more space to work. There are some Sterilite clip boxes that I use that I love for this, and I'll link those in the show notes for you. I find it really helpful when training my kids to put down a really large blanket and set the sensory bin right in the middle of it. This way, if a little mess happens, it's not a big deal. Just grab the blanket at the end, pour everything back in. Remember, we are training our children, and when we first learn a new skill, mistakes are going to happen. This is just a part of learning. So you're ready to hand the bin to your child. But first, go over your expectations with your child. Now, this is going to look a little bit different for every family, every mom. What you're okay with is going to be different than what I'm okay with or your friend is okay with, and that's okay. For us, the expectation is, Everything stays inside the sensory bin. None of the filler goes on the floor, not in the air, no throwing anything. I'll never forget the first time one of my friends tried a sensory bin. She called me and told me that there was rice all over the house. I don't think you and I can even picture what this mess looked like. She was completely at a loss. She had put her son on a blanket and thought a little mess was okay in the beginning, because she could not have foreseen what would happen just a few minutes later. Needless to say, she didn't want to try another sensory bin for a while. But if you hold both yourself and your child accountable on day one and accept the tears that might come if a sensory bin is taken away, you will set yourself up for success in the future. I cannot tell you how valuable this will be to you. Now, with that said, some spillage is normal. It is absolutely normal. A two-year-old trying to pour rice from one thing to another is going to make mistakes. When these mistakes happen, we smile and say, oops, and clean up the mess together. By having your child take responsibility for cleaning up their own messes, they tend to continue this practice in the future without you even having to prompt them. Both of my kids were always great at picking up the sensory bin feller when it would spill and they would just put it right back in the bin. But... If you ever see your child pick up a handful of anything and throw it across the room, game over, you're done. If they do not follow the rules the very first time, if you let them win this first time and they think it's okay, the next thing you know, you have rice on the other side of your house, just like happened to my friend. Now, if your child does not have a lot of experience with using small materials like dried rice or beans, 
then I find it easiest when training to use a larger material the first couple times. Dried pasta and crinkled paper are a couple of my favorites. You can listen to the first part of this series where I go over what a sensory bin is to hear all about this magical material that is crinkled paper. You find it in the gift wrap aisle at places like Hobby Lobby, and it's just that torn up shredded paper, and I fill it up in a bin. It makes so many cool sounds, and it's so much fun for them to touch. But the best part is, is it kind of all sticks together. So even when they're playing with it, it's not going to go flying across the room because they accidentally shook something a little bit too hard. Kids just have an easier time cleaning up these materials. So they're great to start with. And then once they understand the expectations, it's time to dive into new things. This is when you pull out the dried rice, beans, rolled oats, and even small toys can be really fun. Now, if you find that your child is really struggling and you've tried the pasta, you've tried the crinkled paper, and they just don't understand how this whole sensory bin idea is supposed to work, then I would recommend trying something a bit different. You can still get a great sensory experience by doing something like a Lego bath. Fill up a bathtub with water, a little bit more water than you would usually use, supervised of course, and dump in a bunch of Duplo Legos. They make such a cool sound. You can make boats. They can make them, you know, drive around like little cars in the water, whatever they want to do. But they'll learn the concept that the toys stay in the bath. Picture this as just a giant sensory bin. We've also done a lot of washing stations in our backyard where I'll fill up a big tub with water and then put toys inside of it and all the toys have to stay in the bin. So this is another great way to train that's really easy to clean up should something spill. We want to give our kids these experiences and let them try new things in fun and playful ways. And by setting these expectations from the start, you will be able to create the most beautiful learning moments for your children in the future. Next week, we are going to talk about some of my favorite ways to incorporate academic activities into your sensory bins so you can do more than just create an independent PlayStation you will actually be able to use this magical bin that they already love so much to teach them letters, numbers, colors, shapes. The list just goes on. So make sure to tune back in next week as we dive into the wonderful world of academic sensory bins. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Teach Your Littles at Home. I hope you are feeling so inspired to create a new activity to do right away with your little ones. If you like listening to my mommy, will you please leave her a review? Before you head off to plan the next activity, would you mind leaving me a quick review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening from? This is the only way for me to know if you're finding my tips, activities, and advice helpful, and I get so excited reading each and every review. I hope this episode has left you feeling empowered to try something new with your kids this week. And if so, would you please hit the share button and share this episode with another one of your mama friends who also wants to create activities with her little ones. I can't wait to share even more fun activities with you on our next episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day playing and making memories with your little ones.